My guys, it is a hot, sticky summer night in February down here in the second collapse of civilization here in the Mayan Empire of Chetamal, Mexico. It is a Thursday night. That would be February 23rd, 2023. And uh, I'm heading back to the jungle tomorrow. <coughs> Not sure if... Uh, I will be able to bring you my ecological meltdown roundup, Manga Bay full roundup, but since it is Thursday night, hot off the presses, we have the new uh, the new roundup, but I am, uh, since it's not Friday, I'm going to do something a little different and pay some close attention to uh, this podcast that Rhett Butler and the boys and girls, I guess this is actually Mike DJ Girolamo. Good Lord, dude. Find a new name. But anyway, he had the good fortune of interviewing uh, Elizabeth Colbert. Uh, if you don't know Elizabeth, she was the author, I think, did she win the Pulitzer Prize for the, is it the sixth extinction or the sixth mass extinction? And she came out with this book, which I've mentioned before, Under a White Sky, the Nature of the Future. I think it's been out a while. I uh, mentioned it before, but anyway, uh, Manga Bay, Mike at Manga Bay had the good fortune of interviewing Elizabeth. This is a half hour, it's a podcast, it's not a video. I highly, I highly uh, advise you to take the 30 minutes to shut me up right now, but I'm going to put the link on here and shut me up and go listen to Elizabeth uh, herself. But if you want me to whet your appetite, uh, the name of the article is Goodbye to Blue Skies, The Trouble with Engineered Solutions. So the wrap up, the, the Cliff Notes version before we get into the full description and then you can listen to the podcast at any point you want to. <clears throat> Humanity has created a lot of ecological problems. Ha! Huh? Do you think so, Elizabeth? And many of the proposed solutions come with giant price tags. Or the things lost can even be priceless, like the sight of a blue sky with no guarantee of solving the situation in the long term. Many such solutions like Australia's deliberate introduction of the toxic cane toad, which has wreaked havoc on the country's wildlife, create new problems. Solar geoengineering, what, you know, the the uh, conspiracy wackos call chemtrails, Solar geoengineering to slow climate change would have the most visible effect to all, likely making the sky appear white. Anybody who has seen these uh, persistent contrails knows exactly what she's talking about, or cap trails or capitalism trails as Sandy Shellis and I call them, you know, you know exactly what we're talking about, what the, what the wackos are, are saying they're doing on purpose, where these, these things are spreading from horizon to horizon and spread out, making the uh, entire sky a milky white. Uh, but of course, uh, they're going, you know, if they start doing this for real, this is when these chemtrails are going to be real. All right, solar geoengineering 
to slow climate change would have the most visible effect to all likely making the sky appear white no more blue skies but how would this affect the global plant community's ability to photosynthesize would it harm agriculture Pulitzer Prize winning author Elizabeth Colbert joins the Manga Bay newscast to talk about her latest book Under a White Sky which examines these interventions, the problems they come with, and humanity's seeming inability to stop turning to them. And now you can go on and listen to it yourself or I can give you the, uh, the Cliff Notes version. <clears throat> From pumping aerosols into the atmosphere to combat climate change to gene editing invasive species, human beings continue to conjure up technologies or miracle fixes to ecological ills many of which stem from previous things society has done, whether it is electrifying rivers to prevent Asian carp from entering the U.S. Great Lakes, or $14.5 billion levies to keep the city of New Orleans from sinking temporarily, humanity continually creates mega solutions that often fail while harming biodiversity. Yes, argues journal journalist Elizabeth Colbert, quote, we seem incapable of stopping ourselves. Yes, her latest book, Under a White Sky, The Nature of the Future, explores many of these projects chapter by chapter and what she describes as quote sort of a dark comedy yeah uh, she joins the manga bay newscast this week to talk about what she found while writing her book and why she urges readers to be skeptical of these machinations one doesn't need to go back very far in time to see a human-made intervention gone awry, the effects of which still linger to this day. Australia, which does not have any native toad species, introduced a particularly invasive one to combat beetles affecting sugarcane crops in Queensland, Today, the toad species is considered an enormous pest as it is toxic and animals die from eating it. Proposed solution? Genetically alter the toads to not produce toxins. An effort Colbert says that is also doomed to fail. Some human-made interventions, which are still in the research phase, raise more concerns about impacts experts do not fully understand or even know yet. One such project is solar geoengineering, for which over 60 academics are urging the cessation of any research signing an open letter last year detailing their concerns. The technology spews aerosols into the atmosphere, creating an artificial shield that blocks the sun's UV rays, whitening the sky to temporarily cool the earth. The effect on our planet is hard to determine precisely, but the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in 1991 offers a glimpse as it temporarily lowered global temps by 0.5 degrees Celsius, 
after it blanketed the stratosphere with particulates, similar to what solar geoengineering entails, even more severe, the eruption of Mount Tambora in 1815 in Indonesia ushered in the year without a summer, bringing about famine in many parts of the world. Many experts say the risk of deploying solar geoengineering is simply too high, but Colbert says it is still on the table. Some experts argue that since we are not on track to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2050, interventions like geoengineering are inevitable. And I have been saying, good Lord, for uh, what have I, 14 years, I have been uh, making this claim that this is not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you're going to see this. All these solutions, Colbert says, are part of a societal, quote, habit of mind that she ultimately cautions readers against. Quote, quote, we reach for these interventions that allow us to continue doing what it is that we want to do, which is often destroying the natural world. Close quote. Uh, and then uh, they have uh, several related articles they've done on this. You, you know, this is uh, the one of the many frying pan versus the fire. Uh, you, you know, conundrums we have put ourselves in. You know, if we don't do start doing this, we're going to burn up. If we do start doing this, we're, we're going to, if we don't burn up or freeze ourselves to death, you know, we're, there's no telling. This is why it is our choice from this point forward, frying pan or the fire. We can stay here in the frying pan, or we can jump out of the frying pan and land in the fire. And there you go. And uh, I wanted to. Uh, I was hoping they were just going to reprint uh, this letter. Uh, but they have a link to this other <clears throat> article that I remember uh, reading last year uh, about the same subject. I'm just going uh, to read the, uh, let me read the lead in and one part of this as long as my camera hasn't collapsed. Okay. Scientists are calling on political institutions to place limits on solar geoengineering research so that it cannot be deployed unilaterally by countries, companies, or individuals. And they're already testing this. A, a private corporation is already testing this since Mexico was the first country on the planet to ban this. Good for Mexico. They're just going to California. And I think in a couple of weeks, this private corporation is going to be uh, starting to test this because there's no law saying they can in the U.S. Long-term planetary level geoengineering and interventions of this kind are unprecedented and extremely dangerous, say the academics behind the letter, and should not therefore be experimented with outdoors, 
receive patents, public funds, or international support. Solar geoengineering's leading proposal injecting billions of aerosol particles into the Earth's stratosphere could have severe, unintended, and unforeseen consequences. Modeling suggests that it may cause drying in the Amazon rainforest. In addition, if solar engineering were deployed, it would need to be maintained for decades, I would say centuries or millennia. Sudden discontinuance would result in Earth facing what scientists call termination shock with a sudden temperature rise due to existing atmospheric carbon emissions which it would have been which would have been masked by cooling stratospheric aerosols there you go uh, so this actual article from last year if you missed it last year Blocking the sun's rays with an artificial particle shield launched high into Earth's atmosphere to curb global temperatures is a technological fix gaining traction as a last resort for containing the climate crisis, but it needs to be stopped wrote a coalition of over 60 academics in an open letter and article released uh, in this, you know, one of these climate journals. Uh, anyway, you can find the link. Uh, I'm going to put the link to this, you know, to the, to the new article, and you can go on there and find uh, and find the interview with Elizabeth Colbert and this background article. Uh, I'm going to read this one section of this article and wrap this up. More than 60 academics signed the letter, including Dirk Messner, the president of the German Environment Agency, Cambridge University climatologist Mike Holm, Asa Persson, the Stockholm Environment Institute's research director and award-winning author Amitav Ghosh. Scientists know that aerosol particles can temporarily cool the Earth's surface uh, but to offset global warming caused by carbon emissions, an artificial aerosol particle shield would need to be continuously replenished, running contrary to a goal of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change to prevent, quote, dangerous human interference with the climate system. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, welcome to the frying pan or the fire. It is your choice. And uh, I'm going to be heading out of the big city of Chetumal tomorrow. I'm going back to the jungle. Not sure what my internet's going to look like. So, uh, if you don't hear from me for a few days, I'm having fun in the jungle while I still can. Bye, guys.